this now. Genesis 21, verse 14. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and watered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle and she cast the child under one of the shrubs. And she went and sat her down over against him in a good way off, as it were a bow shot, for she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. It's already anointed. God, I pray that you'll anoint me. May I speak to oracles of God. May lives be changed. May you be lifted up in Jesus' wonderful name. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. I put a title to this message, Stuck on Standby. Stuck on standby. How many's ever been stuck on standby before? Amen. So I, I I have the privilege of speaking uh, quite a bit, and I, and I leave about once a month out of my church, and I speak at uh, different places, Chicago, and I just got back from Chicago doing a conference there, and just different places. But many times I've, I've I've found out that I get stuck a lot of times on standby, and I have to wait. Uh, for my flight to get there. Sometimes it can be 30 minutes. Sometimes it can be three or four hours. But Denver, Colorado, there was a, a blizzard and there was a, uh, a major storm taking place and there was a, uh, a standby, basically, yeah, yeah. For, for 48 hours. And you can Google it. It was one of the biggest blizzards that they had. And it caused over 2,000 flights to be canceled, leaving over 5,000 passengers uh, stranded inside the airport. They were bringing out cots. They were bringing out food. They were bringing out little toys for kids to play with. And uh, Denver Airport had a mass mess because of this blizzard. There was a lot of folk aggravated, agitated, mad, ticked off. Come on, say amen. amen. And so people getting all upset because they were stuck on standby. And so they, they, they were just uh, having this issue and, and attitude. And, and we need to understand that a lot of times that there are seasons in your life when you are placed on standby. Yeah. I said there are seasons in life when you're placed on standby. Everything in life doesn't happen when you want it to happen, how you want it to happen, and where you want it to happen. But it will happen. But a lot of times we get discouraged and, and we want to give up and we want to throw in the towel because we're stuck on standby. But just because you're delayed doesn't mean that you're going to be denied. Come on, y'all. So, so in this passage of scripture in Genesis chapter 21 that I just read to you, we have some individuals by the name of Abraham and, and, and Sarah and Hagar. Now watch this. This woman by the name of Hagar, uh, Hagar in the Hebrew means flight. So what we see here is Hagar is used as a surrogate mother to bring forth a child in Abraham's and Sarah's house. And, and, and Abraham and Sarah, or let me say this, Sarah allows Hagar into the house. Yeah, yeah. Now, I don't know about you. I don't know about... Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies. If I was to say, hey, baby... Uh, I'm married to a beautiful young lady and, and uh, I've been married for about 21 years. But I said, hey, honey, uh, can we bring Shaniqua over to the house? <laughs> She's going to be taking her earrings off. Right? Come on. You know, right? And, and, and so, so watch this. I want you to see the Bible with me. Hagar is used as a surrogate mother to bring forth a child in Abraham and Sarah's house. And, 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 and they allow it to happen. And so when Hagar has the baby, his name is Ishmael. Ishmael starts to grow up and Sarah then finds out that she's pregnant with child. Now the will of God comes to pass and Isaac is born. Are y'all with me? So, so now the will of God has come to pass and, and Isaac is born. Isaac comes forth and Ishmael and Isaac, they get in a disagreement. They start fighting. Yeah. And so, so Hagar is now feeling rejected because Sarah has her baby. So Hagar, her name means what? Life. Life. Hagar. 
Hagar means flat. She's missed hers. Now she's on foot. Okay. All right. So Hagar is feeling rejected by someone that used her for a season and kicked her out of the house. We're done with you now. You can leave. Hagar has missed her flight. Hagar, Hagar the Hebrew flight. Now she's on foot. She's on standby. Are y'all still with me? So, so she's missed hers. She's in a temporary situation. And the Bible says that she's gone in the wilderness. Uh, she has a little bit of water, a little bit of food to sustain her. The bread and water was given to her in verse 14. And by verse 15, it's all gone. She's run out of water and run out of food. So Abraham sends them out because of what he did, not because of what she did. So a lot of individuals are placed on standby, not necessarily because of what you did, but because of what some people have done. And I said all that to say this. Sometimes you got to cut people out of your life. Sometimes you got to say, I love you, I appreciate you, but it's time for you to go. How do you know that everybody can't go where you're going? So, so I, I've been in standby situations in airports before, and it gets frustrating. It really does. I, I've seen people go to the ticket counter, mad, agitated, frustrated, and, and, and but sometimes, look at your neighbor and say, sometimes, uh, sometimes standby happens because of issues that are out of people's control. Amen. 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 So, so, so. Uh, a standby happens because of mechanical difficulties, and the last thing that you want to do is get on a plane with a mechanical difficulty and try to ride it by faith. Listen, I'll walk any day before I get on a plane that has a mechanical difficulty. And so what I'm trying to say is this, don't get all upset whenever you're stuck on standby. Like I said, you may be delayed, but you're not being denied. Now watch this. Sometimes you get delayed because of storms. And I've been in airports and I would look outside and the weather's all beautiful and it's great. But understand this, even though it may look great on the outside, it's, it's for this reason. You're placed on standby, not because of where you are right now, but because of where you're going. Are you grabbing this this morning? A lot of times we're stuck on standby because of God saying this. I know your next level. I know your next destination. I know where you're going. And God is saying, I'm going to place you on standby just for a season because I have something in store. But a lot of times we get discouraged and we want to throw in the towel. But the Bible says whenever we're in that kind of situation, we don't need to throw in the towel. We need to throw up our hands toward heaven and bless him and praise him and know that God is going to work that situation out. How do you know that God says in Genesis, 20, that he will turn your situation around. Yes, what the devil intended for evil, God will take and turn it around for your good. Look at your neighbor and say, for your good. Come on, y'all. I'll take a standby fight any day. See, God has a purpose. He has a plan with all those problems. And understand your problem is on purpose. God has a plan. And know this, God will sometimes hold you back because he knows what is happening in your future. That car could have, should have, would have hit you, but it didn't. Because God had you. you got to stand in your standby. It's a temporary situation, and God is about ready to turn around. Watch this. Temporary financial setback, but you're blessed coming in. You're blessed going out. You're blessed in the city. Uh, uh, in the city you're blessed in the field. Everything in your hands touches, but everywhere your feet walk is blessed. you got to understand that you're blessed. It's a temporary financial setback. I'm looking at somebody right now that needs to understand. Even though it's like you're in a financial setback, it's temporary. Amen. Temporary setback because somebody said something about you. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Temporary setback because you need a healing. But the Bible says by his stripes you are here. You need to understand these things. Temporary setback because you feel all alone. But God said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. you got to understand. you got to get a word for your situation when you're stuck on standby. Don't complain. Don't murmur. Don't cry. Don't give up. But trust the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. I'm preaching a lot better than I say it again. Don't lean on your own understanding. But acknowledge God 
and he shall direct your path. So, so watch this. We see that Hagar was depending on a man that is not her husband. She was depending on flesh to provide for her. The minute it ran out, she left, she quit. What Abraham provided had ran out and she gave up what meant what, what was meant for Abraham to provide, Abraham didn't have it. It was God that was providing that. Now notice this, verse 18, if you go down in the scriptures, it says, Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. When you're stuck on standby, arise, get up, quit sitting down, quit being discouraged. The Bible says, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. It's time for the church to rise up. It's time for the believer to rise up. I'm going to rise up. It doesn't matter what I'm going through because God's going to take this situation and use it for his glory. Come on, say amen. amen. I, I look at 1 Kings chapter 18 with another individual, uh, Elijah. Elijah is in a, a dilemma. He's a stuck in standby, basically. But the Bible says, and you can read it later, 1 Kings 18, 42, Elijah began to put his head between his knees. He gets in a birthing position. How many know sometimes you just got to shut out your family? Sometimes you got to shut out society. You got to shut out family. You got to shut out co-workers. But Elijah, he got in a birthing position. He put his head between his knees. He says, I've got to get a word from God. Listen, thank God for your pastor. Thank God for the associate pastor. Thank God for television uh, preachers. And thank God for everything that we have access to. But sometimes you just got to get a word for yourself. He's waiting like a mother waits for nine months. Come on now. She's waiting, right. anticipating. She gets antsy. Come on, mamas. She gets aggravated. She gets frustrated. She's waiting. She gets mad at the baby. She gets mad at the daddy. She gets mad at the mother-in-law for having the daddy. So, so she gets to the place to where she's ready to have this baby. She gets to the hospital and she thinks she's ready to give birth to this baby. And the doctor says, hold up! It's a false alarm. You're going to have to go back home and wait. But once she has that child, she doesn't think about all of the waiting. Once you get a word from God, the wait isn't an issue because the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall not up with wings as an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Teach me, Lord, to wait. So we see here, sometimes you have to wait for the word. So, so she has the baby. She holds the baby. And she says the baby was worth the wait. Uh, listen, when my, my wife had our firstborn, her name is Kaylee. She's 19 years old now. And, and uh, she's on staff with me at the church and as one of the assistants. And so uh, she's grown up to be a beautiful young lady, very smart, intelligent. And, and, and she needs to get married and move out, though. <laughs> So, so she, she's single and searching, but she, she's like Esther, though. She's waiting for the right one. Amen. She's soaking in the oils in the presence of God. But watch this. When, when, whenever uh, we were in the hospital and, and we were about ready to have this child, or my wife was rather, and I was in the room and the doc said, you, you want a, a video in there? No, I don't want a video. I just want, you know, I just want to be in there. Uh, just to hold my wife's hand. I want to get that on camera. You know, I don't want to do none of that. And so I was just waiting and waiting and watching and waiting. And all of a sudden, the doctor said, okay, come on this side. And he says, here comes the baby. And when the baby came out of the womb, I looked at the baby and I looked at the doctor. And I looked at the baby and looked at the doctor. And I said, something ain't right. <laughs> Are y'all hearing me? How many ever been in that situation? Something ain't right here. Something don't look right. I looked at the baby's head. Now, what's good? This is my child. I looked at my baby's head. That's like something wrong with the baby's head. 
I looked at the doc and said, is everything all right? He's like, yeah, everything's fine, everything's cool. Just wait. And the Spirit of God quickened. He says, look at your wife. I looked at her. He said, now look down at your baby. I looked at the baby. He said, now look back at your wife. I looked at my wife. He said, now look at your baby. And I said, okay, what's up? <laughs> and the scripture came to my mind that God declares the ending. Yes. <laughs> God declares the ending. Oh, come on, somebody. <laughs>
be intimidated. I don't know if God can use me. I don't know if God can use me. I mean, this, this stand, I just don't know. You, I just feel hopeless. I feel helpless. I don't know if I can even do anything for God. But see, while you're waiting, waiting, that word wait means to serve. Wait, a waiter needs to serve. But we have this mindset. God, what are you going to do for me? God said, wait, wait, wait. Wait on me. Serve me. See, but we don't think that God can use us. Listen, if God can use Noah, Noah was a drunk. Hello, can I go down the list? Abraham was old. Isaac was a daydreamer. Jacob was a liar. The Bible says that Leah was ugly. These are all people God used. Joseph was abused. Moses was a stutterer. I'm just reading the Bible, y'all. Uh, uh, Gideon was a, a scaredy cat. Samson had long hair, God forbid. Samson was, Samson was a womanizer. Come on, y'all. Rahab was a prostitute. Elijah was suicidal. I, Jonah ran from God. Job was bankrupt. Uh, Peter denied Christ. The disciples fell asleep. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. So, so watch this. Zacchaeus was too small. Paul was religious. Timothy had ulcers. And Lazarus was dead. One says, put on the garment of praise yeah. for the spirit of heaven. Is. When your mouth is uh, 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 full of praise, it's not full of pity. Amen. Amen. Oh, that's right. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. We start feeling sorry for ourselves. Come on, y'all. Come on. Yeah. Praise releases the life of God. Yeah, yeah. Acts chapter 16, the very familiar passage of scripture, Thank verse 19. Paul and Silas were beat up and, and locked up in prison. And, and, and at midnight, the Bible says, they began to sing praises unto God. Verse 26 says, and suddenly there came an earthquake. The doors were open and everybody's bags were loose. Two were praising God, but everybody got loose. What would happen if everybody in here started praising God? Your family would get loose. The community would get loose. The biggest book dinner would get loose. Come on. The biggest mistake the devil made was putting Paul and Silas in the same cell. Why? Because one will put a thousand, two will put ten thousand, and exponentially speaking, do you understand? situations, these obstacles I, while I'm stuck on standby. Amen. And there's a process to get through that. And that process process is praise. 
peace. Yeah. That's what's going to get you through your standby. Amen. Now, I haven't always been saved. How many, how many has always been saved? How many, how many has a past? Twelve. We're going to have an altar call right now for all the lives. Come on, don't let me take a jacket. I'm all right. how, many, how many has a past? Come on, raise your hand. How many got a past? Yeah, we all got a past. We all got some things in our past. We all got some skeletons in our closet. But thank God my skeleton got blood all over it. Come on, man. I've got a past, but thank God he's washed all my sins away. Thank God that he's given me a brand new start. I, 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 thank God that he's washed all my sins away. But I haven't always been saved. Now, I've got a past. Like I said, I, growing up in, in high school, I, I wasn't always living right. Even though my dad was a pastor in a, a very thriving church, but I, I, I didn't live right. Can anybody identify? Yeah. And, and so, uh, my friends and I, we would go and get high. We would do some drugs. I ain't proud of that. That's my past. And, and, and uh, whenever we would go to get high and things of that sort, my friends, they, they would see... Uh, Pink elephants and, and, and all of those things. But when I get high, I see Moses. I see the, and the Apostle Paul, the four horse of the Apocalypse. I saw Jesus. Go why? Because my parents were praying parents. They were praising parents. They were trying to shield me and keep me from. Come on, y'all. Listen. They would be saying, You see that elephant? No, I see Jesus. You see that? No, I see the four horse of the Apocalypse. I see Moses, I see that. But watch this. The best thing that you can do in life is learn how to praise God. Yes. Yes. Does it take all that? Let cancer get your body. Let your child end up on a carton of milk. Hello. Did you catch it? Let your child's picture come up on a carton of milk. You learn how to throw your hands up in the you learn how to cry out to Jesus. You learn how to call out to Jesus. You learn how to say, Jesus! Yeah. You learn how to say, Lord, I need you right now. Yeah. But see, why wait? Why wait till all hell and your house? Why wait? Why wait till all that happens? When the children of Israel, they crossed over to the other side. Here comes Pharaoh and all the chariots and all the horses. When the horse and the rider was thrown into the sea, Miriam broke out the tambourine and started dancing and shouting and rejoicing. All of them were just having a great time. I have a small issue with that. Anybody can praise God on the other side of Jordan. The horse and the rider thrown into the sea. Listen, listen. Why didn't they start praising God right in the midst? Come on now. Of the adversity, but they done crossed over and the sea, the sea that swallowed up all the enemy. Uh -huh. Anybody can praise God when the enemy is defeated. But how about praising God in the midst of your situation? Uh -huh. I was watching the process right the other day. And as I was watching the process right, I got encouraged by something. Uh, uh, you know how they do, they they, they say uh, uh it just happened to watch it a couple couple weeks ago, and you know they call the name. In, in this particular show, it was like this, you know, the announcer, during the announcer, the guy says uh, that day, he's like, Chaquita Jackson, come on down. <laughs> I kid you not. A couple weeks ago, and, 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 and she was in the back, she started jumping up and down, excited, I do. get your name, get your name, you get all happy, right? <laughs> She got all happy and just dancing, excited, excited. She ran down to the podium. And she was still saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. All excited, thank you, thank you. And she was like, okay, okay. We get it, we get it. I don't know if you see it, but it's going to be Thank you, thank you. And then God spoke to me right then and there on my couch. He said, that's the kind of praise I'm looking for. Amen. What you talking about, God? Amen. He said, her thanks started back there. Amen. And it continued right there at the podium. Amen. But the desired place for her to be was. Oh, y'all missed it. Come on now. Amen. She hasn't even got to the place that she desired to be. She was still praising him 
in the middle of the situation. But it started back there. And it continued right here. And she still wasn't there. If you learn how to praise God right now, and if you continue to praise God in the middle of your situation, God will get you to that desired place. If you will realize that even though you're stuck on standby, God will get you there, but you've got to learn how to praise me in the midst. Somebody say, praise him in the midst. Praise him in the midst.